Yeah. So we have just received a bunch of new cameras for the office. And these cameras are going to be used for instructional videos, anything from how-to guides to unboxing to how do you roast coffee, servicing, you know, you name it. But then I thought, why not just do a little video and just test this out so that we can answer some of the questions that you guys had on social media and by email. And of course, the elephant in, in the room, the, the question about delivery for the, uh, for, the, for the R2 and R2 Pro as well. So let's start with the delivery first. Okay, so we are in production. We are manufacturing roasters right now. The problem we've had is with the induction electronics. It's always been, you know, the Achilles heel of the machine in terms of manufacturing. It's not easy. So we built a small batch of two 30 volt boards, and these are uh, already manufactured and being shipped out. Next week, we're going to have another batch of two 30 volt induction boards. I think it's 250 pieces we're going for this time. And right after that, we are going to start a 110 volt induction board assembly. And the reason why we do it in this order is because we have had some issues with the 110 volt uh, induction boards. And let me explain what, what happened. So doing testing of these boards, we have to test them, the boards from a range of voltages. So anything from 95 volts up to 140, 50 volts to see that they work in this range. And what we discovered was that some of the boards didn't work very well under 105 volts. So even though that's, you know, already on the limit to what we recommend, we wanted to make sure that, you know, there is a higher margin for error here. So we, we, we dug into the, to the, uh, to the problem and we discovered that the induction coil and the capacitor circuit that is here on the board was super good for, you know, uh, 1500 watts. But once we added that additional P10 power step, it was right on the limit at a low voltage. So we had to redesign the coil with the windings. And so we basically had different windings on the coil. And then we had to get different caps for, for this circuit. And we had to do a lot of testing because we wanted to make sure that everything is, is working as good as it can. And also the, you know, getting these components is very special. Um, they, they are not available everywhere. So we had to find the right vendor to, to um, supply us these parts. So that's why the 110 version is after the 230 version. However, problem is fixed. Everything is working super well. So, um, you know, the induction board has never been better than it is today. So let's get on with the questions. Bulbul is asking more about flow sense, please. So, yeah, I would love to talk about this because this is a, actually a very interesting technology. So, on R2, we can now measure the flow inside of the exhaust pipe. And we do this by measuring a differential pressure. So it's, you know, it's a, it's not a new technology, but having these sensors that are so ultra finely sensitive that we can measure even super low flow, like F1 is on the bullet. This is not something that we have, have uh, had access to before now. So what that does is that it allows us to map the R1 flow and use that on the R2. But on the R2, it's driven by the pressure sensor. So what happens is that if your sensor is, sorry, not your sensor, if your fan or your chair filter is dirty or your chair collector is completely full, it doesn't really matter because it still allows us to get the right airflow just by turning the fan faster. So it's a controlled loop, right? We measure the pressure and then we adjust the fan speed accordingly. We can also tell you when it's time to clean your filter because of this. So it's, you know, it's a technology that, that is actually super, super useful, especially if you're doing back-to-back -back roast of the same coffee with the same recipe and you want to get the exact same result every time. Super useful. 
A guy is asking about the recipes, if they are translatable from R1 to R2. And yes, they are. You can use any recipe on R1 on an R2. However, if you want to use an R2 recipe on an R1 machine, you need to make sure that you are only using up to P9 and not more than that. Otherwise, you will not be able to use it on an R1. Same guy is asking, how fast does a pro cooling tray cool down a kilo of coffee? We can do it in around two and a half minutes for a full kilo of coffee. And this is because of the bigger surface area of the tray itself, but also because we have a much more powerful fan on the cooling tray. Which brings me to another question that someone asked, and that is, can I use the pro cooling tray on an R1? And yes, you can, but you need to use an additional uh, power supply to drive the stir motor and also the, the much faster and more powerful fan. If you do that, then you can still connect it to the R1 roaster and control it from there. And you can also control the stir and the fan from the, from the cooling tray itself. Okay, so it's not a problem. This kit is gonna come out after we've fulfilled all the, the uh, orders for R2 Pro. So I think we're looking at Q, end of Q1 for next year. We should have these available. The Pro Cooling Tray is coming out Q1 next year. Same guy is asking, is the Pro Cooling Tray equipped with a bigger tear filter? Yes, it is, because we wanted to make sure that, you know, you don't have to, there's a real benefit of having the, the Pro Cooling Tray in terms of maintenance as well. So there is no filter in front of the fan. There is, however, a box after the fan. So it's basically sitting underneath the, the roaster. And this is a this box contains a filter, and all your chaff will go straight through the fan into this filter. You take this filter off just by pulling a handle and, um, and removing it from the side of the machine. It's connected by four magnets. Super, super simple. Can contain a lot more chaff than, you know, the standard... Um, R1 tray. <clears throat> then another guy is asking, is the seasoning procedure the same for R1 and R2? Yes, the seasoning procedure is exactly the same. However, right now that we've been seasoning a lot of roses in our office because we've got a lot of R2s from the factory back here to our office to test and we have to roast on them, right? That's the best way to test the machine. Because of all the smoke generated during the, the seasoning we came up with a different solution, and it's super simple. Take a pot for cooking that can fit under the, the door. So you just remove the cooling tray, use a pot instead, and fill it with water. So you basically dump all the coffee out straight into this, um, this pot of water, and then you add an additional water to the top just to cool it down really, really quick. Then you have almost no smoke, and, um, and you don't have the stickiness of the beans on, the, on your new cooling tray. There's nothing to clean. It's a lot easier. So I think from, from now on, this is what we're going to be recommending you guys do. That's all we have for now. But um, if you have any questions or if there's anything that you would love to know about our product, please ask us and we can make a little video about this. We also have Jacob Lilly. He's going to be here and explain and talk about the new electronics for the R2 and R2 Pro and why we decided to change from R1 to R2. So stay tuned on that. Until next time, thanks guys.